Welcome everyone. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. It is the 7th of August, year 2024. And uh, I'm gonna welcome our panel. We have April who has joined. April is a psychic, a medium. She has quite a few modalities of healing. She's actually doing some kind of Qigong tra training as well. So I'm waiting to hear once she finishes the certification how it goes. Good evening, April. Grateful for your presence here. And then we have Patricia here, who is part of a core group of meditators, as well as Sharon and Sri Lakshmi have joined online. Grateful for all of you to uh, make the time, selflessly give your time and efforts. So actually, I had a question, Patricia, but I know you were talking about something you want to ask April that question, and I'm going to check and make sure that the live stream is going uh, streaming to our group page. Okay. You want to ask April the question? She has a dilemma today. I mean, this week, uh, April. So I'll let her start, and then we can talk about it. Thank you. It's really about the the question is about ego. Oh, I know. I probably know the answer, but um, I would like your input on it about like, it feels like I keep working on it, working, meditating, integrating, healing, and then situation comes and then my ego reaction comes out. It was a situation with my daughter this morning and um, I thought I did my some of my Qigong exercises this morning, even even in the rain. So I felt so nice and elevated and a good energy. And I started getting ready to go to work. But my daughter asked me simple questions like, what time are you leaving? Because her boyfriend was driving all night from North Carolina because he's flight was canceled due to the hurricane and he rented a car with his friend to come back and he was like 15 minutes away or something so she basically was worried that he's not gonna have a parking spot by my condo because a lot of places has a sign and only a few visitor spots so she wanted to make sure that I leave to work before he comes so he has my spot and in that moment, without even realizing that this poor kid was driving, was up all night, then his flight was canceled, then uh, he was driving all night. All I heard, because I kind of don't really like their relationship, I don't think he's good for my daughter, so I had uh, already some kind of load. Um, in me, but when he asked, she asked that when do I leave? I just, my ego immediately come out. It's like, oh, you care more about him than me. So your his comfort is more important than mine. It was, came so fast and obviously she stopped me. She's like, I'm not going to talk to you. Get out of my room. She actually, she actually used, you know, curses. And that even rubbed me more wrong way. So I just left with, with anger, like almost, shut the door with force to her room and then got myself ready and left. I mean, he actually got like two minutes before I left. So I just, you know, look at him, acknowledge him coming. And I said, oh, I'm glad you made it and just left. And then on the, my drive to work, it was still pouring. I was mulling over this whole situation and I was so disappointed then I wasn't ready for this and just didn't, you know, just not acknowledge and be good. Like the ego, the old me came out so quickly that I didn't catch it. So my question is, is there a point that you can actually stop it before it comes out and not have it appear? Yeah. So I really love Eckhart's suggestion of, um, you know, his suggestion. We have your volume turned up, April. I think you're a bit low. Please, sorry about that. Didn't mean to interrupt. Thank you. Okay. 
So is it better? Yes. Or do I need to, maybe I need to, um, I don't know if there's a volume on this. But it's better. It's much better. better? Okay. So I really like uh, Eckhart's suggestion where uh, we're mindful. And I know some people don't like that word, but it's an easy word to understand where we're mindful of our thoughts. We're mindful of our reactions, our emotions, and becoming aware of that, becoming aware of when the ego wakes up is how you can catch yourself. And the more you catch yourself, the faster you catch yourself, right? I also like his explanation of, um, I'm not angry, I'm having some anger. That is phenomenal to me because it does put that outside of you automatically. Mm -hmm. But what you're talking about here, it is ego and it is the same message that you have, which is what about me, right? Is about, I want to be important. I want to be validated. I want to be thought of. I want to be loved, respected. And the your instant pattern was, she doesn't respect me enough. She just wants me to leave and give my spot to this boy. So that's your old pattern. But I really think you should stop and give yourself some credit because you noticed it super quick. You noticed it really quick. So that shows improvement. But again, it is a pattern that you have that hasn't been fully resolved. And yes, you can get to the point where you don't necessarily have it all the time. And, um, but it is a process and it, it is not a perfection. It's also about be, not only being able to step back and observe your ego and your pattern, your shadow, but being able to observe the other person. So again, it's really, 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 really important to understand people act how they feel and off of their level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So learning to not take things personally is really, really huge. Yeah, a few, but, a few elements of ego came up. The fact that, you know, I'm the mother, number one. So I should belief. not. Belief. That's right. a belief pattern right. right so that was one one the identification with the role of the mother and just because i'm a mother i should be you know respected and put that i'm the most important person in her life kind of thing <laughs> yeah we should be and anytime you say should remember that's an expectation yeah anytime you say should it's an expectation and it's your belief. It's a pattern that you have. It's a belief that you have. And I feel also that that was my ego sabotaging all the good work and all the good times that we had this summer just being together and but me when you say moving all, to her. When you say all, Patricia, that's one of your patterns too, is to just wipe it all away. We don't want to wipe it all away. Right? So that's where we catastrophize and like that, that it's all ruined. That again is one of your patterns. That's your shadow, your pattern sneaking up on you. This is how they show up in a sneaky way. Right? So it's not all gone. It's not all lost. And again, you caught this really quick. So you really should give yourself some credit for that. That is key that you are becoming more aware of your beliefs, of your ego, of your patterns, of your shadow. Those are That's what's really important. And you're doing that. And I also have been, even at work today, I don't know if my energy, if this has something to do with the lion's gate, but I broke the a battery operated like a jumper cable thing. Uh, this morning, um, trying to charge it for one of the technicians that had to jump and I saw the batteries was slow. So I just broke the connecting piece, whatever. And that was so upset. Then the um, second thing I found out that the bid that I worked on Monday, because we were bidding for the, the service pest control village of 
right, Brooke? I worked so hard and I was so proud of it. I, I felt that we were gonna get this because we had, you know, did and then one line, which was the first one that you're supposed to submit it in a sealed envelope. And I asked even the boss, please read it, double check, and we need to put it in the envelope. And he said, oh no, I, I get this this folder. We'll just put the, the sticker on it and I'll I need to drop it off now. So he like rushed me. So he trusts me completely that I did everything right, which I think I did. However, they, today he told me, oh, by the way, we, we got disqualified because it wasn't in a sealed envelope. My whole like body dropped, mm -hmm. you know, like- So what I are you felt, saying? What are you telling me when you're saying that? And we, that we I do that. Failed. No, no, that this, yeah, no. well, that's what you think you're telling me, but that's not what you're telling me. <laughs> and this is something that we have to watch and we have to learn to be aware of your attached to outcome. You're attached to the outcome. I did this really good job. I put all this energy in. I did all of this. I did it perfectly. And it has to go through. It has to go through. It doesn't have to go through. I wasn't maybe not, not as much attached to the outcome, but I knew that, you know, the work I put in, I actually enjoyed it and and you know I, I, so that's where your satisfaction uh, so, is not and they trusted me to do this because i've done the bits before they didn't really but patricia you didn't fail you're not the one that didn't put it in a sealed envelope yes but it was my and job to kind of go no. through every step to to submit it the right way so that was part but of it. you you gave it to him and he chose not to so how did you fail but i didn't tell him if you didn't if you don't put it in the sealed envelope it might be disqualified i didn't put tell him this i just said it probably should go in the envelope so it sounds like it's a group effort it, it was a group effort <laughs> it's a group effort but i took it yeah i took it kind of you know the ownership of you the have. Yeah. So the um, the question, Kelly, is that uh, she had an incident with her daughter where she was getting ready for work. Her daughter's boyfriend was driving from North Carolina. Her daughter asked her, when are you leaving so that my boyfriend can have your spot? And that woke up Patricia's ego. And she got mad and basically said, oh, you know, he's more important than me. The daughter tells her to F off and get out. And that's what happened that that is what her question is today is why did her ego still show up again after she's done all this work um and you know why couldn't she stop it and then the next scenario is where she's at work and she puts in all this effort and then it gets denied uh so and then uh punam for your first question i already completed that course that she gone on so. You have to set like a time where you're teaching us that. Oh, yeah, that's we would love to, yes. Uh, when those you're... are that's um it, it it's at least like an hour and a half at least session for that. Okay. But yeah. Thank you. So Kelly, thank you so much for joining. It's been a long, long time, maybe four or five months. So I'm hoping everyone that's watching um Still remembers Kelly. Uh, Kelly and Kelly have been Qigong teachers, and uh, they have decades of spiritual teaching behind them. And they've been on the panel. I think Kelly started with Louise probably like four years back or something like that. So been with this group for a very long time. So you got the question, Kelly, what Patricia was asking. So she's she's trying to find a solution. Thank you. I also kind of uh, uh, circle or back to that. Lions Gate portal right now that this is like very intense stuff coming up for me and and you know so I don't know if that has something to do with with Lions Gate or it would just come out regardless. Well, sometimes the intensity feels like it feels more intense because of all the energies that are coming because it's like you have new energy coming in and in order for you to embody that you have to squeeze out the old stuff. So it's kind of like you're a tube of toothpaste. So you have to, you know, 
when you're embodying something new and you're moving into a new space, you're going to find that there'll be certain times like, you know, I was thinking about this today because it's like there's new moons and full moons and then there's all these other portal days and it, they happen all the time. And then when you read descriptions for everything, they're always they're always kind of the same. <laughs> right it's like we're moving out of ego well yeah so it's it's just shows everybody that it's an ongoing process and there are just sort of specific times when you've got these portals open of entered new energy coming in that you can sort of take advantage of the fact that oh we can accelerate our growth a little bit so um I was I'm kind of clear not I'm not totally clear on what you're what the situation was that your daughter asked you to just move your her your car she chose in my hand in my head she chose the comfort of her boyfriend over her mother mm. and i did in that split moment i did not really take in under consideration this poor kid was driving all night because his flight was canceled but due to the right. storm he drove here and if I needed to leave 10 minutes earlier, you know, why not, right? To do it for another soul. It's not a big deal, but mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just that and I don't also worry, upset or something. And what underlined the issue is that I don't really like mm -hmm. this, the relationship they're having. So I've been having issue with that for a longer time. That I think he's a lot, a lot of selfish, and I see that she does a lot of things for him that, in my head, he doesn't deserve because he doesn't really, you know, appreciate it as much as I see, you know, that she really does the effort. She cooks for him, she drives him. Ever, I was like, forget it. That's the... So it came up also with that. So it was already in me, even though I'm trying to work on it. It's like this is her lesson her relationship, I have to respect that if there is a lesson there that she needs to learn from him, you know, give them this, but then I go back and something like this happened and this whole like exploded, you know, just, I didn't have time to stop it. Didn't catch it. Well, I think like April said too, like you, you did catch it like after, like, and when you catch it faster, we have to give ourselves some acknowledgement for that. I think as mothers, it's very difficult when if we we also have to transition ourselves out of um, life changes, just like our children transition into life changes. And I know that's, you know, the past few months for us with Kelly's dad passing away and then um, my youngest graduating high school. And then all of a sudden, the last few months I have all of these children that are in relationships and the dynamics completely change between you and your kids. And it's not that you still aren't close to them, um, but you have to transition yourself too. Like that's a big thing I think with parents is that our kids transition and then we don't transition ourselves. So we kind of have to transition ourselves that at one point, at some point in our lives, I am not going to be the most important person to my children anymore. And I have to be okay with that because I have to be the most important person to me. And whether or not I agree with my children's relationships or, you know, I have a fairly good relationship with all of my kids. So they will come to me if there's, a, if they're having an issue or if they want to figure out how to talk to their significant other about, something that they're going through or something that they want to address. I am very careful about not telling them exactly how they should be doing it because it isn't my life. So I always keep in mind that my kids came here to do different things than I am here to do. I don't know all of the things in their soul contract that they're supposed to do. I actually don't know how aware or awake, quote unquote, they're supposed to be this lifetime or how much their soul is supposed to grow. So I have to figure out how not to hold myself back and keep growing because, and then your kids will grow anyway. The more you grow, 
you kind of will pull them along because you have the blood bond and you also have the energetic bond between them or between you and them. So I don't know. I had a few thoughts going there when I was saying that. Doesn't that put me back? Get, like, what happens Pardon? right now? Doesn't yeah. that you feel like it puts you back? Like you did that problem. Oh, you froze. You froze for me, so I didn't hear what you just said. Oh, the, the situations like this, experiences, do then don't they put you back, kind of backwards instead of you growing? No, I don't look at it that way. Like if my kids trigger me, because I always then go look at like on my own, like why was I triggered? Why did I get triggered? Because honestly, as a parent, if you choose to have children, your children will be your biggest triggers for you to grow at any stage of your life. Isn't that it doesn't right? really matter. Like <laughs> they will because that's just the dynamic, I think, of that relationship is that they will trigger you to grow. So it's how you choose to look at it. Do you look at it like it's a setback or do you look at it like, oh, this is a time, this is when I can actually even grow some more because this triggered me in such a big way. Why? What am I letting go of? Or what do I not want to let go of? Because with our kids, we do have emotional attachments to them. So it's not that we want to completely eradicate those attachments, but we don't want to have the ego attachment that my child has to always listen to me because they're just not. They're going to go out and make their own decisions at some point. And sometimes we might not like those, but it's also learning how to communicate to them and say, you know, I feel like, you know, you might be hurting yourself or, you know, if, if you can find a way to have those conversations, which are very difficult to have because somebody's feelings, probably theirs, are going to be hurt. And it's going to be like, oh, mom, you're against me. But I know as my children have grown, I've chosen to have those conversations with them all the time. I think it becomes a little harder when everyone's an adult because then people are, are really attached to certain things. And then it's like, oh, well, you know, you can't tell me what to do because I'm a grown up. <laughs> yeah, I've got that. I've got that. Yeah. So it's sort of like if she's moving into a new space for herself and, you know, you have to move yourself into a, a place of acceptance, too that you know it's not about you her it's not about her choosing him over you I think that's where a lot of parents get kind of stuck in that because we feel like well they're choosing this person over spending time with me but it said well what can I do with my life now that I have more freedom because now they're they have they're exercising their freedom so what am I going to do with mine Yes, thank you. I don't know if that helps at all, but there's a lot of nuances with parents and kids. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. It does help. Thank you, April and Kelly. That was nice. I know that Sharon is patiently waiting with her hands up, so I would like to hear <laughs> what Sharon before has. Before Sharon speaks, I'm going to say something, uh, but I did want to thank April always. Eternally grateful, April. Time and time again, you provide like advice. That's perfect on the spot. Thank you, Kelly, for your advice as well. Uh, a couple of things that I would say, Patricia, is one, you have to realize when you are 20, take yourself back to being 21 and the amount of approval seeking that you have, that condition pattern, that karmic condition pattern has moved on to her. So right now, she is approval seeking from her boyfriend. Just imagine how you groveled at maybe your ex-husband's, uh, when, when you were 21, you groveled at their family and groveled for him. Yeah. She's doing the groveling now. But why? Why? I thought because I it is a condition pattern. Is. I don't you, want you, her to... You passed on the condition pattern already. It's been 21 years. She's it's also part of being young. It's also part of just being young and being in love. And yeah. <laughs> just imagine yourself at 20, 21. Wasn't your ex-husband or whoever the man was in your life at that time? Wasn't that the center of your world? Yes. That's I mean, what she's doing. Is that her center of the world? 
And if you tell her to get away from the center of the world, she is going to fight you tooth and nail. And as Eckhart says, a young person has a lot of energy. Their ego has a lot of energy. They have youthful energy. She will fight you tooth and nail to stick to her point of view. How much ever you say something about him, she is not going to change. So all you need to do is accept that that is a spiritual teacher in her life to teach her a spiritual lesson. It may work out. It may not work out. It's okay. If it works out, that's good. If it doesn't work out, that's okay too, right? Acceptance of what is complete surrender to what is. Then as far as you saying that why did I, um, why did my ego rise? We have had so many conversations during group meditation. And I told you, I will never visit that conversation. We've talked hours about this conversation, about your schedule and not being able to maintain a meditative state. Like Dr. Joe says, you cannot do 20 minutes of meditation and the rest of 24 hours. 23 and 40 minutes be unconscious, right? You cannot do 20 minutes of Qigong or whatever and say, I'm going to be present for the rest of the, that only comes when you have, like Eckhart, even Eckhart had to work from year 20, when I mean, he was 28 years old until he was 47, 48 is when, he started to maintain it at a steady state, right? That's when, so that is why you lost the bid. Because you were not holding presence. The, the, you, you've not been doing, if I ask you what your schedule was for the past two months, you have not been meditating like how you were meditating in March when you got your job. But I had this beautiful Sunday that I was connecting. It doesn't, all elements of it the doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That is still active beta brain activity. You were not in theta. That is still beta brain activity. It is not about enjoying the sun. It's not about you have to put yourself in theta state. You have to be in that homeostasis. Until you're in that, no, no matter you or anybody else, if if we want to talk about conscious manifestation, and some of us here are taking the conscious manifestation course by Cartole, you have to the the foundation for the conscious manifestation course is the presence power. If you were not if you were not spending time developing your presence power. And you were constantly on the go, go, go. Let's go here. Let me go swimming. Let me go do this. Let me go shopping. Let me go do. You're not in theta state. The moment you're not in theta state, you will make mistakes. If you had done enough meditation, something intuitively would have told you, ask him to stop and put, you would have put the thing in an envelope yourself and sealed it. Does that make sense? You would have that you would have had that intuition yourself. You would not have made that mistake of not telling him not to put it in an envelope. Yep. I didn't have that conscious and, and strength here. Yeah, kind of you didn't have that intuition. And that intuition only comes with enough presence power. And the presence power is not there because you've been doing stuff with your daughter and giving all that activity more, more attention than giving your presence. Like Kelly said, now is the time that you spend time on developing your presence power. Forget your daughter. Your daughter, you've done 20 years of being with her. That's it. Let go. She's gone. Right? She's somebody else's. She has her own life. Now it is about developing, if you are really serious about actually doing spiritual work, serious about maintaining this presence power, you have to work at it, right? You have to work at it until it becomes like a certain natural state that normally like, okay, this is gonna be the natural state that uh, we are in, right? 
So that's my tip for you. That instead of saying, oh, I my ego took over, why did your ego take over? Well, I've not been in presence the past few months. I haven't been doing my meditation. I mean, own it. Own the mistake. The real reason why all this happened, and I've been telling you, like you had a car wreck accident last year. You had issues at work last year. Every time that you don't have presence power, but how much ever I tell you, the universe slaps you. Again, you got a slap from the universe. Wake up, right? That's all. Sharon, it's yours. Thank you. Thank you. You're yeah, mute. Yeah. Sharon, you're muted. We can't hear you. She's Thank talking you. away, talking away on mute, right? Yes, I'm going away. <laughs> I said, hi, Kelly. I haven't met you before, and it's nice <laughs> to meet you. And I wanted to say this to everyone, but about Pat when Patricia started talking about, I can relate to that because my daughter is grown with her own children that I interact with. So I've gone through what you have. And, but I thought... One thing, and I don't know how this fits into ego, and um, you all might be able to give me some input. I found that it's okay to set some boundaries. That's not, I don't know if it is. I don't feel that that is my ego if I'm not doing it in anger or I'm not saying, oh, you like them more than me. But if I have to have my own personal boundaries in my home, then if I do that ahead of time and, and let them know what it is, and they can have theirs too, and if I can respect them and they can respect mine, are there any thoughts on that, on the boundary part? Um, like, there is no word called boundaries, Sharon, in my vocabulary. The same thing as I don't have a vocabulary of uh, inner child. I, I don't speak of an inner child, right? So okay. If you're, well, if I'll change the word. You, you you're pretty... Like. Uh, um, no, no, I'm saying the reason being when you are at the depth of brain and heart coherence, yeah, it's, it's not like you are going to ever tell somebody that you don't want them in your space. Yeah, if that person is unconscious, automatically there will be a separation, right? Because you're not vibrating, vibrationally, you will not match. Right. But if you you were in brain and heart coherence, no matter like he's just a 22, 23 year old kid. Right. You would t tolerate him. Not so How much as tolerate, not so much as, uh, tolerate. It's, it's like you would allow the moment to be as it is. Right. Um, you yes, then. But I might go back later and say, you know, um, I wouldn't say you like him better than me because that, I don't think that's the case. I think she's always going to love you, even when she has boyfriends, even when she marries, even when she has children. There's still going to be that mother-daughter bond. That's just my feeling. But when I say boundary, I mean, I guess that's a bad word because we haven't used it. But I mean, there are certain rules of relationships in order for those relationships to flourish. Does that make any sense? No, there are no rules. The rule is either you you can <laughs> offer unconditional love or you cannot offer unconditional love. We are here. Well, I can offer unconditional you're love. Pretty not... loud. You're pretty loud. I don't know why. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll it turn sounds, it down. It sounds like you were like shouting at us. No, I wasn't. <laughs> is that no better? Yes, it is. Maybe Thank it's you. too low. No, it's fine. No, I wasn't shouting. I'm sorry if it appeared that way. <laughs> That's fine. So like the vocabulary of boundaries, one is not never in my life. Um, relationships will be relationships, right? But there is never intolerance towards anybody in our relationship. You allow that relationship to work out, work itself out, right? And if that person is unconscious by itself, they'll get separated out. It's not going to be, it's not going to be something that, I have to consciously say, the moment you say, oh, I need a boundary, then you made the other, and here is me. And once we make 
the other, and here it is me, that is the ego. About when when we What's, make uh, um, something so that the ego doesn't come up, so that we both feel comfortable with the situation, like talk, having good communication. If you were in brain and heart coherence, you would always come from a place of love. So they would always. Yes, I, I, agree. I agree. There would be good communication. There would never be any harsh words said. You would always be saying something that is right for that the right action will arise and right Your words brain. will arise so there is no reason why you would not have good communication and that's why the unconditional love april i'll let you take this over and then kelly can talk about it thank you yeah sorry my i had a daughter pop in she needed a couple bags some grandkids i have to turn up. april up i don't know why you guys can't hear it let me turn myself up then it, I when I turn mine up, I have to talk low so I don't sound like I'm shouting. Yeah, I don't know what's happening with me. It's good now. It's good. Does it? Can you still hear me? Mm hmm Okay. So I had a daughter pop in. Some grandkids are going up north, and she needed some bags for them. They're leaving in the morning. So, uh, But I was still listening. And one of the things that was coming to me, and this could be for Patricia or for anybody else, is that it's really regardless of who you're dealing with or when you're dealing with them or what's happening your sense of self and your sense of love and your sense of worth and importance has to come from within it cannot come from without you cannot be expecting it from other people other places events things and if you have a true connection of your own self-worth, of your own love, and that connection to creator, to source, whatever that is for you, then you will be able to take these words from others and not allow them in to your soul, into your heart, even if it is your child. Now, with it being your child, it is much more difficult to do because it is your child. And we do want our children to love us and we do want them to respect us and care about us or any loved one, whether it's a partner or whatnot. So it is a little more difficult. It's a little higher of a difficulty there to be able to hold your own space, to hold your own energy, your own emotions, and to be able to not get upset. But the bottom line thing here is that you need to strengthen your inner love with source and not look for that validation outside of you, whether that's your child, your husband, your wife, your dog. So with, and, and that took a long time for me to foster and to, and that's why one of my passions is self-esteem because I, that to me, that's the core. That's where we, you have to start. You have to start with loving yourself and then the rest of this journey can flourish and can end up wherever it's going to end up. But the wounded part of you immediately took that as, oh, I'm not important. That's where the problem is. But if you know that you're important and that you're loved and that you're worthy, and maybe your daughter's just having a bad day, or maybe she's being the 21-year-old crazy in love, you're able to step back and go, Oh, okay. And then later you can have a conversation and say, you know, I was kind of offended this morning when you said that. It kind of hurt my feelings. You can have that open conversation without all the ego, right? And I think that because the ego has been present in the relationship in the past, you both are conditioned, which is what we do in relationships. We're conditioned to just react off of each other instead of having that open space, that open communication of, you know, my feelings were hurt. And I know I kind of took that personally. And then she can say, oh, well, I didn't really mean that or whatnot. So to me, you really, really got to work on that connection with your source, your creator, and knowing that you have this infinite worth. Let me just and quickly... That Mm -hmm. That does, oh. you can foster that feeling through the heart brain coherence. So this is meditations, right? 
So I just, you know what, Patricia, there, you can use meditation, but there's different forms of meditation. But I would also remind myself throughout the day when I was first doing this, every time I would bump into that ego, that shadow, that pattern, that habit, that energy, anytime I would get that slight feeling in my body, I would notice that slight feeling in my body. And I would say, no, you're worthy. Nope, you're worthy. Nope, you're worthy. And I would say it a thousand times a day. Just, and I would just keep saying it. And I wouldn't let anything, I wouldn't let my mind say anything else. Mm. Nope, you're worthy. Now and about the heart. I rewrote that program. The heart brain communication. I watched Greg Braden. Have you guys ever watched him? Mm -hmm. And he talks about how to do it, how to be so grateful in your heart and bring it up to your brain and just have that feeling of gratefulness or whatever that joyous whatever you pick that's a, a feeling that you want to instill because your heart has the same kind of capacity for emotions that your brain does is that am i understanding that correctly so your brain your heart has uh neurorites in it it has brain cells in it and they're actually at the opening and the um they're surrounded around the open where the blood flows in to the heart is where they're focused and yes it has no right. Other so, ways can I promote having that, having more heart brain cohesion? What other ways? Is that the best way, just doing it the way he said, keep having those feelings? Well, he and... got that from, yeah, he got that from the Heart Math Institute. Yes. Yes. And it's, it's breathing in through your heart, imagining that you're breathing in through your heart, and then you can link, well, it will automatically link you up, but then you can link it up. But okay. any any type of deep breathing, going into your body, connecting with source, bringing that energy in, any type of that. So my message really is, hi, Mowgli, get more connected with your inner worth. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, April. Thank you. Kelly, you wanted to add something to what Sharon was asking? And then yeah, I'll say think, something. Yeah, I think too, like, well, and it's it kind of all goes together um, with what Patricia was saying and or expressing and same with Sharon is that you can be present all the time. It doesn't necessarily have to come from meditation all the time. Do I meditate? Yep. Do I try to do it every day? Yep. But everything that I do can become a meditation and that's what it does. So if I'm washing the dishes, I watch where my mind's going. Am I just focusing on the present moment? Because being present is actually just being present. You know, if I'm going to the beach or I'm spending time with my daughters or I'm spending time with my sons or, you know, last weekend was busy for us because we had my son's um, girlfriend come in and she stayed with us. It's like, I'm present all the time. I'm present all the time. I know where my mind is going. I know how I'm feeling. So you have, and that just is a practice. You make that a practice. Like April were saying, you do that all the time. And when you have those other feelings, let's say you don't want to have, or you feel irritated with someone or whatever, you rewrite the script. Like you literally tell yourself something else. And, you know, another thing you can do too, is that you tell yourself, okay, I've got, uh, this is a simple one. You just rub your fingers together. And when I do that, when I start to feel irritated or I'm, you know, my ego or I want to, I'm angry at someone or something, I rub my fingers together. And when I do that, I have calm that washes over me because that you can do this. Nobody even notices. You can do it at the office. You can do it anywhere. But that little action alone brings you back to yourself, back to you being present and then going, oh, okay. Yeah, I was getting irritated about something. And I love what April said too about, you know, step back, look at your own ego and then have a conversation that a lot of times like with the word boundaries, like I don't necessarily have boundaries with people. I just know how I feel. If, so, if being in someone's presence or something happens and it doesn't make me feel good, I always ask myself why it doesn't make me feel good first. Because I have to understand why, why is the situation not making me feel good? Is it something about me? 
Is this a recurring thing that's going on? Am I allowing something to happen that I don't want to have happen? You can allow something to just be what it is, but that doesn't mean that you have to keep putting yourself there all the time. Yeah. That's and, a good way to say it. Very yeah. Good. And what, so what April was saying too, just to reinforce that is that that's when for us, like for Kelly and I, like communication with us, between us, between our, like just my own internal dialogue, when I have my own um, communication, that's where do I feel something in my body? Why do I feel irritated? The communication is always with yourself first, always with yourself first. And then when you've dealt with that, you can go, all right, I, I feel like I need to talk to this person about this thing. And this is what I would like to say. And it doesn't mean you have to let go of the expectation about what the outcome is going to be. Just because you express yourself doesn't mean that somebody else is going to give you what you want. <laughs> like, that's right. That's not. Exactly. You know, that's the way life life is. That would be great, yes. but that's not the way it is. But it's it's allowing that you know your worth. Like April was saying, you have you know your worth. Yes. You know how you feel. You feel like whatever this relationship is with this other person is important enough to you that you want to communicate and then you say oh you know this made me feel like this and the step that I take too is like especially if I'm talking to my children I'll say well I step I took a step back when you said this it made me feel like this it reminded me of another time in my life when this happened so this was my trigger so can we talk about that? Yes. And not most of the time, people will say, well, oh, I didn't mean it to sound like that. Yeah. But when we're not conscious of how it sounds when it comes out, <laughs> or if we're not even conscious about, you know, they were even doing something, because that happens right. a lot where people will do things unconsciously and have no idea yes. until you bring it to their attention. And yes. most of the time, people will want to make a change in their own behavior because we were brave enough to to bring it to their attention yes and then if they don't they don't and that's right. okay too. yes no right. attachment you to know, the outcome i like you, that you know and you know how you feel and you can be present in every moment with yourself thank you kelly you're very welcome thank you kelly So Patricia, you have to do a little bit more uh, audio reading of A New Earth. Uh, chapter four talks about roles, right? You have to let go of the role of being a mother. And Eckhart actually in one of the videos said, um, when children are small, when they are eight years old or five years old, yes, we have to tell them, don't do this, don't do that. By the time they are 12, he put the age limit at 12. He said, you need to become a guide more than their mother or father. So she's 21. You're no longer even a guide. Now that soul has to make its own journey, make, make its own mistakes, make its own selections, right? It'll lead out its own, own life. Like April said, our job is to now, now that you realize the truth of what the spiritual path is, you can make a choice, right? That, okay, I'm not going to leave this path, which you've left for the past three months. You've left the spiritual path the past three months, and you're seeing the results of it, right? You're seeing, you're seeing the outcome of it, right? So you, um, and if you were using Dr. Joe Dispenza's work and you were trying to overwrite your old self, you've gone back to your old self because of the lack of awareness. Your old patterns came out. Your old ways of communicating with your daughter came out, right? This lack of presence, which you told me in the morning, you're very present, but there's, Right there is the morning, and you're, this is uh, Wednesday. It's not even back in Friday. You're still in the middle of the week, and your presence has left you. 
right? That means you realize, Patricia, these are the signs that are showing whatever you're doing in the morning is not giving you enough presence power. Your ego is attached to the way you lead your morning, but that is not giving you enough presence power. Your routine is not giving you enough presence power. Does that make sense? If you thought that, oh, I put my feet on the uh, on the uh, this thing and grounded myself, I did my qigong, I did my, none of that gave you enough presence power that you went off on your daughter. Right. That 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 was my question. How is it possible? But now I understand. Because because those things the universe is telling you those things and i've told you time and time again that that is not what is giving you enough presence in the morning that is not sufficient especially when we are like if i take myself uh 10 years back like the stage that you are at right i needed the two three hours of meditation because your day-to-day -day work like Kelly is in a different spot than what you are. Kelly does not do mind activity work all throughout the day. Mind intensive work and working with all these different types of human beings, right? Each human being that comes into your space, every technician that comes into your space, depending on their vibrational energy, they'll bring your energy down. If you don't raise your, if you don't raise your vibrational energy, uh, if you don't raise your vibrational energy, right, and have it raised, then each person is going to draw. Where is your energy leaking? As Carolyn Mace says, you let your energy leak. So now draw the energy back. That's what April said, right? Draw the energy back to you. You've let it leak out. Uh, draw the energy back to you. Sharon, to your brain and heart coherence, um, there are a lot of meditations that Dr. Joe Dispenza, keep, uh, keep looking for Dr. Joe Dispenza's work. If you want, take up his progressive course. It's like $300 or something. If you can uh, attend one of his advanced retreat, um, attend one of his advanced retreat, because his meditation in combination with his uh, breath work, he teaches brain and heart coherence. Okay, thank you. So it's not just breath work, it's also the fact that we, our analytical mind is constantly going and how to slow that analytical mind is the key because the mind chatter, incessant mind chatter is constantly going, right? So you do look uh, tired, Patricia. I would say like wake up at five, uh, set your alarm at 5 a.m., and don't don't worry about the celery juice, lemon water tomorrow. Just wake up at 5 a.m., go shower. Don't even wake up about, I mean, do your morning routine. Just try and give your body rest and see if that helps you for with tomorrow. And then tr try and do some meditation in the evening as soon as you come back. I mean, and then like if your daughter pulls away from you, don't take it personally that if she says she's going to go do stuff with her people, she's going to go with friends, she's going to go with relatives, wherever she's going off, don't go, oh, she's not spending time with me, or I need to spend time with her just because, no. If you have a routine that you have to come back, you have to eat and immediately meditate, go meditate. You don't need to spend time with her. A time will come that she will want to spend, at that point in time, when you let go, right, that I don't need to spend time with you, she will realize, like right now, she's like, I don't want to. Like you're so much in her face that she's repelling that, right? So the moment you say, okay, I'm, I, I am my own self and I'm gonna work on myself, what I need to do is I need to come home, I need to eat my dinner, shower, I need to do my meditation. Um, a hi, give her a hug, you're done, go do your meditation, go to bed. Have that routine every day, right? Does that make sense? Instead of using that egoic mind that says, 
oh, it's my daughter. I need to spend time. I need to turn on the TV and just sit with my daughter. It's my daughter. But you're wasting time. You're wasting precious time. Right? It's a useless, the most useless activity human beings do is watch movies, watch the, the, the reason why I do it because she does it. She puts useless. it on, so I want to do something with her. You know what I mean? That's the ego talking us talking you out of presence. The ego loves to do that, right? The ego wants tr tr to strengthen itself. The ego is going to fight you, right? The ego is going to keep you up. Like uh, on the drive, instead of saying, okay, I don't need to worry about my daughter um, or whatever happened with my daughter, it's done. Your present moment was driving. You could have done some breath work, like Kelly's saying, make every moment your present, you sat and mulled over what happened with your daughter. You went in the past. You were no longer present even while you were driving this morning. Right? Yeah, it, and then we had a Zoom, con a Zoom call with our business coach and I was also very pushy on it. And it's just, the, the whole day was just rough in the least, energetically. Hopefully you have some tips. I would say, please take this advice. Set your alarm at 5 a.m. Do not wake up at four or the, the largest time you can give yourself to sleep, 5.30, 6. If you can wake up at 6, shower and go go to work, wake up at 6. If it's 5.30, wake up at 5.30 and go see how different that day feels the moment you have enough sleep. Because it's already, it's already 9 p.m. for you, right? With that, I would say, I think we can close the meeting. Any Anything else, Kelly and April? Are we good? I'd be interested in Qigong as soon as uh, you're ready to give a, an hour and a half class, April. Oh, the um, healing Qigong thing? Yes. Yeah. That, well, and Kelly and Kelly offer, they offer Qigong too. Okay, um, cool. Mine is, mine is different. It's a different kind. Um, but they offer several classes. What too, kind uh, is yours, Kelly? Really good pricing. Um, one of the Qigong sets that we do is called the Eight Pieces of Brocade Qigong. I um, did that before. I love that. I don't remember it all, though. Yeah, we oh have my that. gosh. We actually have a, a web app that's very has a very detailed course on it. So if you want the link, I can... I can send. Oh you. yeah, send it to me, please. I'm to look it up. Um, yeah, we're gonna be adding more. We also teach um, another art that's called Baguajang, and that one. Um, I know. I know that have, one. Have you heard that one too? The walk. The circle walking. Yeah. Yes. I haven't done it for, for many years since I took kung fu and tai chi, and I oh, would yeah. love to do it again. I would absolutely love it. You make my heart so happy. Oh, well, very nice. That's actually how I learned how to med meditate better. I had a very hard time sitting still because I was a very active person. I had four kids. There's lots of things. And I was always very active even when I was a young child. So um, I, I, that the Qigong and the, the circle walking helps to bring you present, make you present in your body. Because as I'm sure you remember, if you're not present and actually focusing on what you're doing <laughs> you, you really have to focus and to do it the right way that you're supposed to I had to make many adjustments many many times <laughs> yeah yeah and so it's great for the that physical awareness and then it brings you deeper into and there's another one um oh I'm not sure if I'm saying it right uh jam zhong which is standing stake which is actually really good for grounding and opening that up like the tree oh. when you stand like the yeah, tree and you keep your like back tree. straight I never, yes, I know it. I didn't know that word. Yeah. That's a very good one for grounding when you're standing barefoot outside also. Yes. And you yeah. feel the roots go down into the ground. <laughs> yeah. You can see it in your mind. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it's, it's the best, like people always talk about sitting meditation, but the standing meditation, if you've ever just tried to stand with yourself, even for a minute. <laughs> yes. 
Make it another so, minute. It's very challenging. Yeah. It's very, very challenging. challenging. Eat, to work it up to five minutes took me a long, long time. And I don't think I could do that now having not done it. Yeah. But I'm so excited to do it again. Excellent. Yes, that's great. I'm glad I asked that question. <laughs> With that, thank you so much for your thank you. time Everyone. and efforts. Thank you for choosing your divinity over your humanity. Eternally grateful to you all. April, time and time again, you come through. So thank you. Infinite gratitude, Kelly. Grateful that you're back. Looking forward to having more sessions with you and Sharon Me and too. Patricia. Your questions are amazing. So I'm sure it applies to a lot of people. We we like batter you and stuff, but I know it applies it to applies. a lot of people. Yeah. So eternally grateful for you. Get some rest. Many blessings. Much Thank love. You. Many we'll blessings. See you all on Friday. Bye. 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 Good night.